Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. It's another all new news runner that we've got in store for you today. We've got news regarding the international football that's been going on for the past few days. We've got news about Mohamed Salah that we need to talk about. And we're talking about a transfer story that we've covered and talked about a lot over the summer that may be taking another turn in the near future. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you, please like the video and also subscribe for a new both things always and for would be greatly appreciated. But for now, let's get back to talking about the news, starting with last night's bizarre, absolutely crazy events that took place a few minutes into the Brazil versus Argentina game. Yes, we're going to be diving headfirst into this crazy and bizarre situation. It was the events that took place last night between Brazil and Argentina in their World Cup qualifying game. The match was only a few minutes old when Brazilian health officials stormed the pitch over suspected COVID violations regarding four Argentina players. The players in question are Tottenham duo Giovanni Lo Celso and Cristiano Romero and Aston Villa duo Emi Buendia and Emi Martinez who all travelled to Brazil over the course of this international break and of course were involved in last night's game in some aspect despite the fact that they should have been isolating upon entering the country. The game was suspended and FIFA will therefore make an announcement in due time as to what their decision is, not only on what on the repercussions of the, this incident, but also the result of the game and so on and so forth regarding this entire incident. I just don't get this situation at all. I don't get how it could get that far. I don't get how this situation could reach this point where it was the game was in progress and then got ultimately uh, infiltrated by, by health officials and then ultimately suspended. I just don't get how this could happen, especially when the Premier League was supposedly on the same page, reluctantly, but on the same page in regards to not sending their players out to red zone countries for the international break. But allegedly, Argentina did have some sort of arrangement or agreement with Tottenham and Aston Villa over these players going and playing for Argentina during this time period. I just don't get it. They've, uh, then to even get into the country and get away with not self-isolating. The fact that they probably knew where they come from, they probably know who they are and they probably know that they came from England and, and whatever the regulations and laws may be in regards to COVID and everything like that. Um, but to not, but to get away with not self-isolating, the fact that obviously self-isolating would mean they'd probably miss the entirety of the international period anyway, having to isolate for so many days. So what would be the point in actually going there at all? Then to actually make the game itself, have everything in place for the game to go on and go ahead only for a few minutes into the game, the game to be interrupted and ultimately suspended. It just baffles me how it got this far in the first place. I don't get it. I don't get how it got to this point. You knew where these players were coming from. It's just a completely crazy situation to me to how it got to this level to this point. And as a result, I imagine that FIFA... We'll make an announcement very soon, maybe even as soon as this uh, video uploads or whatever it may be. And they will either reschedule the game because of how early it was into the game that the game actually got stopped. Or because it was Argentina solely that were at fault for this and were the uh, complete offenders. Maybe they'll award some sort of forfeit victory uh, in the way of Brazil. I don't know what FIFA's uh, intentions are. I'm sure they'll gather all the evidence and everything that they need to make a fair judgment. But those are the two likely outcomes, either a rescheduled game or Brazil are victorious by forfeit. I'm not sure, but we'll wait and see what uh, happens as this bizarre story continues to unfold. Moving on to the other international games that took place last night, we come to England. They were comfortable victors in their game last night against Andorra. The international break is the first that England have had following their disappointment of obviously losing the European Championships final to Italy on penalties. Uh, but the last few days or so, this is the first international period that they've had. They've had a couple of games and this, and they've got back to winning ways here as the road to Qatar 2022 continues. Last night, Jesse Lingard scored twice as Harry Kane converted from the penalty spot and Bakayo Saka also got on the score sheet as it was plain sailing for the Three Lions in a 4-0 victory against Andorra as their World Cup qualifying campaign continues. 
This comes off the back of another 4-0 victory that England put together a few days ago when they beat Hungary in Hungary at the Puskas Arena in another World Cup qualifying game. The game that day, however, was overshadowed by some racist chanting by the Hungarian supporters towards Raheem Sterling and Jude Bellingham in particular, as well as the home fans booing when England were taking the knee at kickoff. Obviously, the racial abuse is extremely bad. It's a very bad layer of the game. It overshadowed the game completely. Very uh, unfortunate and horrible, uh, disgusting um, piece of news to kind of talk about and report upon, upon a game of football, obviously. But this isn't the first or last time that this has happened or will happen in the future because that's just how football is now, unfortunately. And after what happened in the Euros final, of course, England can't exactly take the high ground, or not the entirety of the England fan base can't exactly take the moral high ground here. But England have had this kind of thing happen to them before, and I'm sure other other teams and other nations have as well. But I just drawing from my own experience, I know that England ha have had it in the past. I believe it was a game against Bulgaria a couple of years ago. Something similar or similar incidents happened back then. England threatened to walk off the pitch that day, if I remember correctly. Um, but again, FIFA really do need to step in. They really need to do something about this. They need to really lay down harsher and more firm punishments to these nations. And whilst it may not be fair to the team or the ones that actually aren't racist or anything of that nature, you can't obviously paint everybody uh, of that group, of that fan base with the same brush. But something has to be done and you have to kind of make a statement, so to speak. The only silver lining I can take from this game uh, in terms of the racial incidents and stuff was, that, of course, the, these kind of images of Declan Rice and a couple of other England players pretending to drink from the red cups that the Hungarian supporters were throwing at the likes of Raheem Sterling when he scored. Uh, a good troll, a good symbol against these kind of disgusting incidences and of course uh, a, a very good way uh, of seeing to make light of what is a horrible situation and a way to combat these kind of old-fashioned dinosaurs, I guess you'd call them. But back to the game though, back to England, back to qualifying. Uh, England remain perfect in their qualifying group, five wins from five games, sitting top of Group I, and they look on course to qualify for Qatar 2022. And their next opponents are on Wednesday as they take on Poland. So interesting game ahead there. They can really make a statement there and look set to clean uh, and plain sail straight into the World Cup for next year. Elsewhere last night in other international games, Germany absolutely thrashed Armenia 6-0. They seem to be back on track, back on course. The Germans under their new manager, Hansi Flick. Romelu Lukaku was on the score sheet as Belgium beat Czech Republic 3-0. And Gareth Bale scored a hat-trick as Wales beat Belarus 3-2 on the night. Next we come to the story of Mohamed Salah. And this is a story that has grown a lot and gained momentum over the past weekend or so. Reports emerged a couple of days ago that contract talks have stalled between the Egyptian winger and the club due to him wanting wages in excess in the region of 500k per week. Liverpool have been on a mission this summer to tie down their key players to long-term deals and Mohamed Salah, we know, appears to be next in line uh, in that list uh, of players that have already pledged their long-term futures to the club, especially with a 29-year-old entering the final couple of years of his current contract with the Reds already. Last night, the Liverpool Echo, though, reported that talks are continuing between both parties over a new deal, but also said that the reports of Salah demanding half a million a week are completely false. Personally, I never believed the rumours and reports of Salah demanding that much money. I think obviously with how consistent he's been since signing for us back in 2017 and with how he pretty much carried the club on his back last season in terms of goal scoring and, 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 and in terms of being an attacking threat, he obviously deserves more than what he's currently getting and I think it's time that the club stepped up and paid him back both literally and figuratively but I just never I just never believed that he would demand such a massive figure particularly when of course there's no way that Liverpool would ever cave into them demands it seems Liverpool have been pretty tight with money this past summer Liverpool fans have been a bit frustrated with how the club have conducted their business 
in this past transfer window. Liverpool and FSG don't give out them kind of contracts. They don't give out that kind of money on those contracts. Even no matter who you are, no matter how well you've done, Liverpool just don't do that. FSG just don't do that. It's just not how FSG do business. But having said that, I think an agreement will be made. Like I say, the Liverpool Echo is reporting that these reports of Salah demanding 500k per week are false. I think that an agreement will be made. I think Salah will eventually sign a new contract and all parties will be on the same page up come the end of this entire saga. But of course, we wait and see how this one plays out. And finally, we come to a story that we have talked about consistently and constantly throughout this entire transfer window. Jules Kunde to Chelsea may happen in January after all. The move looked to be on all summer. It looked like Kunde was set to become a Chelsea player. It was only a matter of time. The Blues believed they had a verbal agreement in place for the defender. All they needed to do was sell Kurt Zuma to make space to bring in Kunde from Sevilla. But at the last minute, Sevilla moved the goalposts on the fee and a move in the end didn't materialise. Since then, it's said that Kunde is said to be upset with his club in Sevilla over this. Many people thought that with him posting a, a tweet of lyrics from Drake's new album that he was hinting at a major dispute between him and the club. Uh, he came out afterwards and said it was just lyrics. There was no deep meaning behind it. So read into that what you will. Uh, but whilst the move did collapse in the summer, the January transfer window may obviously bring Chelsea another opportunity to land their target as they are said to still hold interest in the centre-back. But, of course, we wait and see what will happen in January or maybe even what will happen between these two uh, parties uh, come the summer of next year. But, of course, as I always say, these are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of these news stories that I've talked about in this video? What do you make of the bizarre incidents between Brazil and Argentina last night? What do you make of England's performances over the past couple of games during this international period or any other international club that you cast your eye on over the course of this international break? Uh, what do you make of the Mohamed Salah situation? What do you make of the reports of him demanding half a million a week at Liverpool? What do you think will happen there? And what do you think will happen to Jules Kunde? Will he finally get his move to Chelsea in January or will he have to wait just a little bit longer or will Chelsea drop their interest altogether? I'd love to know your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it, down below in the comment section because I'm sure it will all make for interesting reading. Otherwise, hit that like button on the way up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for new or want to see more content like this. Both things are always and forever be greatly appreciated and as always, Thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fresh Talks video. And I will see you and speak with you all again soon in another video.